Well, hello everyone and uh, welcome to my studio. In this tutorial, I'm going to be going over how to paint some fall leaves. So I found this nice reference photo on Unsplash, which I'll upload for my Patreons to be able to download. And I just thought with fall right around the corner, um, it's a great thing to do. Um, it's such a nice uh, subject to paint fall leaves and um, kind of puts you in that mood, even though it's, um, you know, like in Arizona here, 100 degrees, I felt like thinking happy fall thoughts is what I wanted to do. So these leaves have sort of this um, red oxide, uh, you know, tone to them. So I thought I'll kind of, you know, do a little wash. And also in this video, um, I'm gonna talk about brush strokes and how you can use your brush to let your brush do the work rather than uh, your paintbrush. So that just sounded really funny. Your brush do the rather. I mean, let your brush do the painting rather than a pile of little, you know, brushy strokes. Anyways, I'll stop talking and get painting. So the difference is um, I got this number eight flat here. And I use flats because I like that I can use the corner to draw lines. So if I want to, for example, kind of put down, you know, that main branch that's in the reference photo, I can use that corner edge. And I can use the side to create straight lines as well. Um, if I'm using uh, one of those brushes that have like a the filbert the rounded tip, it's a lot harder to control those lines. So I don't like to use them very often because I like the versatility of this brush. So if I start off, um, I can use some of this ultramarine blue and mix that in to create a little darker, you know, darker brush stroke. I can, with fall leaves, I wanna keep them really loose and I wanna keep the the whole feeling just almost kind of mysterious and abstract. I don't want to use my brush stroke um, unnecessarily. So what I mean by that is say I went and used, you know, a number four flat and I'm just going to pick, you know, one of the leaves. So I could go and do this. And this is, you know, one way of painting. You could sit and draw Let's just see, draw a few of these leaves like this, for example, which is perfectly fine. And if that's what you want to do, and then you'd have to kind of, you know, make the little, you could, you know, make the little veins and paint them all, each one like that. But with my paintings, I want to make them look more like a painting that just sort of happened rather than that I, you know, planned where every leaf is going. So... And if you look at the reference photo, you'll see there's a bunch of darker shadow leaves and light leaves. And if you just get the whole feeling, there's it's a it's a shape, you know, of all these different colors rather than seeing them as individual leaves. Try to think, try to let your mind uh, go and just look at it as a shape of of you know lighter and darker rusty orange kind of leaves. So I've got quite a bit of turp in this. That's why it's kind of uh, very movable right now. And I don't want to even look at those leaves because they'll make me think too logically about the leaves. So I'm just gonna go and look at what I see shape-wise. So there's, there's a shape of a grouping of leaves like this. And you notice how I'm using my brush to kind of mush in that shape. I'm not drawing each leaf. I'm just trying to stay clear of that. I'm, I am making some, you know, leafy shapes. I'm not, you know, denying that there's the shape of the leaf, but I'm not doodling in every single one. And then there's, you know, some shadow coming down. There's some kind of dead ones hanging down but I'm just looking at that overall shape of what's on that branch and I'm trying to get that in. And then, you know, there's a really pretty one up here. 
and so if you're a member of my Patreon channel, you'll get the reference photo and everything. And I'll leave this little lesson up on YouTube for, you know, the next uh, few week or so. But then if you want lessons like this, I have lots of them on my Patreon channel. And so for, you know, as little as $29.99 a month, uh, you can get a lot of the full length lessons. And for $10 a month, you can get the YouTube um, tutorials that I do, but you won't get the full length lessons. If you want the full length, you have to sign up for a little higher, higher up. But for just beginning, um, there's lots you can learn from the, the $10 tier as well. So anyways, that's my little spiel. Okay, so now I've got the shape. Then I can look at, um, now we can, we've got the overall shape of what's here. So what I mean is like the, oh, how did that get up there? All this kind of outline, what you see there. Now you can start bringing out some of these lighter leaves, this real light one here. You can start bringing those out. And there's a couple ways you can do it. Um, one way that's kind of fun is I use these Viva paper towels. So one way you can do it is, you know, take your, and another thing is if, if you have a leaf like that's going that way, but in the photo, it should be going this way. Don't worry about it. Just kind of work with what you, what you put out there in the beginning. So if I get a little turp on my paper towel, now I can lift off some of that, those leafy shapes. So I'm still keeping it really loose and abstract and it doesn't look like I'm trying to, you know, control where everything's going. I'm just lifting off some of that, some of those lighter leaf shapes. And now you see there's something there already that looks more exciting and fresh than if I had tried to paint each leaf. So I'm just trying to give you some easy ways to sort of loosen up your paintings and I want to loosen up my painting, so that's why I'm always trying to challenge myself and how would I teach others to do the same. So these paper towels, I know it sounds a little funny, but they are called Viva paper towel and I thought it was funny when my instructor told me to invest in these things, but it really makes a big difference because when you lift off with a rough paper towel, you just won't get the same, you know, the same effect. I even like to kind of lightly just drag that towel across the branches because as you can see, it, it loosens up those lines already. And, um, you know, you can, you can already start to envision your painting kind of becoming something. So now that you've done that, you've just used the turp and some transparent red oxide, some brown oxide. Now you can go in and you can get a little more uh, selective about adding some thicker paint. Now, sometimes I just leave this kind of washy kind of paint, but I kind of like my paintings to have more of that oil paint feel. So, you know, to make them a little thicker. So two things you can do, you can get some more paint. So you might want to, at this point, just kind of wipe away some of that turp so you don't have all that going into your paint because it will make your uh, paint sort of, uh, it just won't stick to the canvas as well if you have too much turp in it. So you wanna kind of wipe up that turp and then mix some orange um, and some transparent red oxide. And you can use your brush and just mix some white in there and I got some of this yellow ochre. I could make a little pile of yellow ochre mixed into that so I get a more yellowy, maybe add some cad yellow just to get that real yellowy, orangey color. So I even add some more cad light to that. So you can see there's some colors going on there. And then you can go and add some, some of those lighter, leaves that you you wiped away but now you can kind of go back and 
add some nice thick oil paint to them. So same with, this works the same, by the way, with acrylic. So I would do the same just using some of the acrylic medium or some, uh, just some water even. I know people won't like that, but if you use enough uh, pigment, paint with pigment like gold, and you can sometimes use get away with using water. So I'm just gonna add some lighter highlights to some of these leaves here. And, you know, I'm trying to, I'm trying not to get like controlling about where these marks are going. I'm just kind of looking at that reference photo and putting in some of those, um, keeping it kind of loose and keeping it kind of like to the leafy shapes that I see. So there's just some lighter bits here and there. And another thing you can do with leaves, which I really love, is let's get a palette knife that isn't completely demolished. Um, huh, I can't find one. So I'll just mix up more of that color. Oh, there's one. Need one that actually I haven't. I sometimes they sit around the studio too long and they've got too many bumps. You want it to be your palette knife to be smooth. So I'll get some more white into that mixture. And I like to do some marks with a palette knife on my leaves. Just because, especially when you're trying to kind of loosen up your painting and just make it sort of fun and a little more abstract, you want to, you can get some of this more orangey color, use some of that lighter paint, and just kind of go for it with that. And, you know, just sort of add some of those highlights in there using your palette knife. So you can really have fun with it and I'm going pretty fast to sh sort of show you, but you can really have fun with that. Drag your palette knife in. Just, you know, we're just, it's almost counterintuitive because you, when you paint, you want to make sure your painting turns out, but kind of the less you try, sometimes the better, especially with something like these fall leaves. So then once you get, be careful not to go over the dark spots too much. You want to keep the values going working for you. So then after you do that, you can again go back and take that paper towel and just really scruff up those marks again. And you're starting to now see that it's going somewhere. So you can keep doing that until you've got it the way you want. Another thing I like to do with fall leaves is um, if I just get something dark, like some ultramarine blue and some brown oxide, that kind of gets a nice dark. You can add some green just to make your own black. I don't have black out right now. So just make a, a line. And before you keep going on the leaves, sometimes it's good to take a little break and see where you're at with the branch. So I'll go and put a few little notes of black in there just to kind of, you know, recalibrate my where I'm going with everything. And also, it kind of helps you to start to see the, you know, what's going on with everything. So it just gives you that, okay, this is, you know, we've got something going here that looks like a branch. And don't put too many lines in just a few here and there and then later you can go back and loosen up some of those marks too because you don't want the branch to become so straight and the rest of it's messy and then you got this perfectly so you can break that up with some color like I'll take some maybe some cobalt blue mix in some of that 
mixture I mix to make the black so it grays it a bit. And you can go and add a little bit of that blue here and there to the shadow, some of the branches. Don't do it to the whole thing, but you know, just here and there. And uh, there you go. So that's sort of a quick and easy way to make some really loose leaves. You can always go back in and uh, with some dark, uh, just some pure transparent red oxide or mix a little bit of that rusty color in and go and reshape some of your your darker, you know, shadow leaves. So you can go back in and kind of add some shape in the shadows. <laughs> shape in the shadows. So just kind of go back in and you know, just kind of work a bit of the the dark back in it can be even just a little mark here and there. Like that. And again, you can loosen those marks up. So And um, I don't want to add too much color to these. I really want to keep them kind of plain. But if you want to just add a hint of something, just to add a little bit here and there, one or two real more orangey spots, you know, just to add a little zing to your color, just to get some orange and mix it in with some of that lighter color. And I'll add a few little hints of orange here and there. Sometimes, actually sometimes adding a little bit of that pink is really nice with, with fall leaves. But like everything, a little goes a long way. So if you don't, if, it, it, if it's too dominating, just take your palette knife and you can shove some of that thick paint into it. That'll, you know, zap it down a bit. And there you go. So I hope that you enjoyed this little tutorial and don't forget to hit the like and subscribe button if you uh, enjoy these videos. Um, there's more on my YouTube and uh, look forward to teaching you in the next video.